All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about the second portion of the unit that we've been working on, and that is erosion. Okay, we're going to do the definition of what it is, and we're going to start, start talking about the different ways we classify it, and we're going to talk about the first type of erosion. We're going to be talking about the different types of erosion over the next few days, so make sure this is a continuous flow in the notes that you are taking. All right, so without further ado, let's go. All right, so today we're going to talk about erosion. Now, erosion is different from weathering. People confuse these two a lot. Weathering is when you break down a rock into sediment, little pieces of pre-existing rock. Take a big rock, break it into smaller little pieces called sediment. Erosion is the process by which you transport that sediment from one place to another. Okay, so erosion is the actual movement of the sediment. So when we're talking about erosion, there's always three things that we're going to talk about. There's going to be the sediment, the pieces of pre-existing rock created through weathering, whether that be chemical or physical. There's the agent of erosion, which is whatever carries the actual particles with it. And there's the force behind it, which is the energy used to move the things. Now, most commonly, the force that we're going to talk about is gravity. A lot of times, you, you'll see with erosion is things tend to move downhill. They tend to follow the slope of the land. So when we're talking about erosion, one of the important things we have to talk about is what we call the agents of erosion. The agents of erosion are what's actually going to do the work of the erosion, what's actually going to carry the sediments from one location to another. Now, there are four main agents of erosion that we need to know. The first of these being gravity, which causes something we know as mass wasting. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more depth in a minute. But basically what happens is as stuff gets weathered at a certain height, Gravity pulls those pieces down, and eventually you get the collection of a large talus deposit. Remember, we talked about talus slopes earlier at the bottom of a mountain range, or in the case of the picture in front of you, the bottom of Mount Rushmore. The second agent of erosion that we're going to talk about is running water. Now, this could be fresh water in terms of rivers and streams. This could be uh, salt water in terms of like ocean waves and tides coming in and out, but basically it's moving water. Moving water is going to carry sediment. Every time it hits, it's going to weather. And when it pulls back or flows past, it's going to carry some of that weathered stuff away with it. So, for example, the picture that you see right in front of you, you can see a small stream or river that's overflowed its banks and it's starting to eat away at that little embankment of grass and dirt that's there and is eating away at that. This would be an example of running water erosion. The third agent of erosion is glacial ice. When we talk about glacial ice, we're talking about large masses of ice that cover you know, many square kilometers that slowly move and drag across the ground. Okay, As this happens, you're going to pick up a lot of debris in front of you, alongside of you, you know, the bottom of you, and you're going to move it from one place to another. This would be erosion caused by glaciers. And the last, of course, would be wind. Okay. Wind is going to have the ability to pick up very small particles and carry them very far distances. For example, the sandstorm that you see in front of you carrying all those particles of sand, moving them from one location to another. Now, we're going to talk about each one of these in a little bit more detail, but this was just kind of to give you a quick little preview, a little glance of where we're going to be going. So the first agent of erosion that we're going to talk about is erosion caused by gravity. Okay, And this is commonly referred to by the term mass wasting. Okay, and mass wasting, the definition you can see it in front of you right now, is the downhill movement of rock and soil under the direct influence of gravity. So basically, dirt and rock moves downhill. Okay, this process is geologic process. It's common. It usually follows generic types of weathering. So when you get uh, stuff like frost wedging or abrasion or something like that, the little bits of sediment that you have left at the top of the hill are going to get pulled down the hill by gravity. Okay, so that movement of sediment, that is what we call mass wasting. Now, this can happen in small amounts. This can happen in huge amounts. This can happen incredibly slowly over a long period of time, or this can happen incredibly quickly. There are a variety of different types of gravity erosion, and we're going to talk about those in a second. We also classify mass wasting events by what moves. Are we talking about debris? Debris would be a mixture of everything. Basically, it's the dirt, it's the water, it's the trees, it's the rocks on the surface it's the rocks below the surface basically it's anything and everything that's on or in the ground that's moving is it mud moving mud would be dirt soil that has gotten saturated with water and is moving is it just earth which means is it just soil that's moving or is it rocks that are moving 
these different things are going to classify and create different types of mass wasting events. Right here represents several different types of mass wasting events that we can have with different materials moving, just like we talked about. So here you have what we call creep. We'll talk about that. Where you can just see it's just the soil moving down. This is going to be a relatively slow process. Here we have what we call slump. Slump is when you can actually see chunks of the material just kind of sliding and slacking off and slumping off, exactly like it's called. Okay, and this would be a mixture of both soil and maybe the rocks below ground. Here you have mud flow, mud slide, or what we call lahar. Okay, where you can see the water and the ice is melting off of this, mixing with the dirt and sliding down here. Here we just have a debris flow. So everything that used to be on this hillside has now slumped and slid all the way down. Okay, and then here we have a rock slide. Okay, an avalanche. Mix it with ice, it's called an avalanche. If it's just rocks, it's, uh, it's just called a rock slide. Okay, but you see all of them have something in common. You have material starting at a high elevation that's moving downwards, high elevation moving downwards, higher elevation moving downwards. Okay, so this is all going to be caused by gravity. All of these guys are what we consider to be mass wasting events. So the first type of mass wasting we're going to talk about is the slow movement known as creep. Creep is a gradual movement of soil downhill. Okay, if you look at a pile of dirt over a long period of time, what will slowly start to happen is the dirt will move downhill. Okay, it will slowly, a grain at a time, work its way downwards in elevation and start to pile up at the lower elevations. Now, this is basically aided by the soil expanding and contracting as the temperature raises and falls during the year. Okay, even during the day, as in the daytime and the nighttime. Okay, remember we talked about hot things tend to expand, cold things tend to contract. This process is going to lead to bits and pieces of soil slowly working their way down. Okay, and eventually you're going to end up with just a large amount of soil just piled up at a lower level or lower elevation from where they were. Now, this is a problem for lots of people who are like backyard gardeners and stuff like that. And you'll see that in about a second. So here we are in my backyard in my garden. Hasn't been planted yet, but this is actually an exa excellent example of creep. Originally, this soil was all held in place by these bricks and held in place, and it has since pushed forward and out. You can see how it used to be that, see that wood right there? That's where it used to be. There used to be bricks and a piece of vertical wood that held it up. But slowly over time, the soil has creeped down because it's been expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting. If I left this alone, it would eventually, all that soil would just creep out. So right now I'm trying to rebuild this rock wall. So the next type of mass wasting event that we're going to talk about is what we call slumping. Now slumping basically happens when you undercut a vertical surface. So you have a cliff or a mountain or something like that, and you cut at the bottom of it. You cut away at the, under, the bottom portion of it. For example, if you look at the picture in front of you right now, this is a hillside or a cliff side, I should say, in California. And at the bottom, you can see the Pacific Ocean. Well, that those ocean waves are chipping away. They're weathering away and they're eroding away at the bottom of that cliffside. As they do this, they're eating away at the support that's holding up the material above it. Now, usually this material isn't too densely packed. And so what will start to happen is if you cut away enough of it, okay, and you eat enough away of it, Okay, what will happen is the stuff on top is no longer supported and it just kind of slides down. Gravity pulls it down. Typically what it'll do is it'll pull it down in a kind of a curved pattern. So it'll make a curved break. If you look at the back of the picture, you could see that. Okay, and it'll just slump and slide down. Okay, now sometimes it can happen in multiple points at the same you know, uh, location on the earth like you see in the drawing in front of you and you can get a bunch of different slumps occurring all at the same time. You have to be careful when you're doing construction or when you're designing things to make sure that you reinforce the bottom portion of the area that you're doing construction and not just worry about where you're actually doing the construction. So you have to pay attention to the walls around you or above you or slightly below you. The next type of mass wasting is something you're used to seeing. It's what we call a rock slide. So a rock slide basically happens for the same exact reasons as a slump. You get undercutting, you get weakening of the base. And in this case, the difference is instead of soil moving, you get rocks large particles moving down the side of a mountain basically think of it as the rocks are like skiing down the mountain and they ain't gonna stop until they hit the bottom of the mountain okay now these can be obviously much much more dangerous okay if they happen in uh, populated locations so for example if you look at the picture that you see in front of you right now you can see a rock slide that's actually happened along a road had there been anybody there that could have been deadly and dangerous okay in order to prevent this you may have actually seen this if you've ever driven uh, across the Cross Bronx Expressway 
right before you get on the um, George Washington Bridge, you may have seen some netting up on the walls. And if you've ever driven on any roads in, you know, the uh, northeast and stuff like that or driven through mountain passes, you may have actually seen netting like you see in the picture in front of you right now. This netting is there so that if we get a rock slide, it can catch the rocks and prevent them from ending up on the road. So that netting is actually put there for your safety in case there's a mass wasting event while you're driving or before you're driving or something like that. The final type of mass wasting that I want to talk about is what we call a debris flow or a mud flow. Now, these are a little bit different. They do have to do with gravity pulling the material down, but you don't really have the undercutting that we were talking about with the other guys. What happens with this one is basically you get rain, like you see in the picture in front of you. You get a large amount of rain hitting the soil. And when that large amount of rain hits the soil, well, remember what we talked about. It fills the pore spaces and things like that, and it can take ground that was pretty packed pretty tightly and it starts to separate the particles out as it starts to separate the particles out it may disconnect chunks of the mountain or the hillside from other chunks and what will eventually happen is gravity will win and it will pull all that stuff down now if you have a large amount of water for example uh you have a volcano with a glacier on top of it that volcano goes off that glacier that ice all melts and you get a torrent of water coming down obviously you're going to pick up a ton of water a ton of material in the water, I should say, and bring it down with you, okay? But sometimes you just get a lot of rain mixing with the soil and you just get this huge amount of soil moving quite rapidly in a downhill fashion, like you see in the two pictures, okay? And this is when you get mudslides or if they're associated with volcanic eruptions, what we call lahars, that's L-A-H-A-R, okay? And these can be incredibly devastating and incredibly destructive if they do happen to occur, All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed uh, the video today on mass wasting. Make sure you're paying attention and you've taken notes. All this stuff is going to be on your upcoming quizzes and tests. And I will talk to you guys later. See ya. Peace.